Got a fucking cold again. This came on fast. Like within a day. I threw up a couple days ago. In the morning. The day that I got hacked, the day that morning, I threw up in that morning and then I came down and I saw that I got hacked and it's like. Oh, this stuff. It's fear. I have been having sex with a friend of mine. This girl I know. And, uh. I haven't really been talking much about it or thinking much about it, but just been doing it occasionally, and it's been it's been a good it's been a connection. But I've been I've been I don't know if I'm afraid. I've been holding back from it. I feel like it's not a it's not a waste of time. It's a distraction. It's so easy to get distracted by it. I'm just really interested in connecting with people. All right. I think that's why I threw up. I think that's why I've been so stressed out. I'll talk more about it. Um, this is actually a video I wanted to make about critical thought mass. And it's late. But last night, I was laying on my couch back here. And uh, Swen sent me these, these whales. I was listening to the whales in my headphones and kind of meditated to it for a while, and I was inspired, it inspired me to get moving on my website a little bit more, and then I listened to the whales some more, and I had this thought about critical thought mass, or thought mass, and what I think about it now, or what I thought about it last night is that when we become aware, when we observe someone, they change. And I don't, like, you know, when you're in a room with someone and you look over at them and then they're aware that you're looking at them and they look up at you, I believe that that is mass. I believe that there's a gravitational pull there. And it's, we, we're the observer. We, we create a focus, a focal point. We focus everything in into this experience that we're having when we observe it. It becomes part of our experience. So, that's pretty interesting. That I really believe that when we when we look at something, when we observe something, that it changes. And I, there's this, uh, what the bleep do we know? There's this Dr. Quantum uh, video about it that I'm going to put in a, in a link into this video. It's an interesting video about firing electrons through these slits and how they function as particles and waves and how observing it actually makes it stop functioning like a wave of infinite possibility and makes it fo function as a particle. Uh, a set possibility. So when we observe something, it no longer is infinite possibility. It becomes what we observe. And I think we have some semblance of control over that, what that becomes, what slit that fires through. You know, how it manifests, how it comes into this dimension to be, how we perceive it. We gravitationally affect that. I'm get, I got this metal in my hand. I'm bending it because I'm nervous. I'm always nervous when I'm exploring this because it's like this is the rabbit hole. Maybe, maybe this is just a it's just a theory. It's not the rabbit hole, it's just a theory. Um when we focus on this stuff and people, we'll use people. I want to use people for instance. No, no, no. We'll just use the electrons that well. Okay, I feel like if someone's on a stage and a bunch of people are watching that person on the stage, and, and are aware of that person and are observing that person, that that person is feeling the mass, is feeling the weight of all these people watching them, directly affecting them. And it is a powerful experience. For me, for to do theater, it's, it's powerful to have all these people watching you. It's, you feel, I mean, I you feel energized in a way like you have like they're giving you their thought mass by them becoming aware of you they're giving it over to you and you then have control of it and then you what you can do is you can you can choose say someone's looking at you and giving you their 
thought mass, maybe if that's what's happening, you can look back at the person and reciprocate and it's a balance and it's a connection. Or someone can watch you on stage, 50 people can watch you on stage, and if you're not focusing on those 50 people, they're giving you their thought mass. They are projecting mass onto you. They are projecting a gravitational force onto you that you then have a semblance of control over, as if you are wielding their gravitational force with your words without realizing it. So when we have people aware of us, our words gain gravity. Literally, I've heard that phrase before. You've probably heard it too. Maybe you haven't. But that our words have gravity to them. They really affect things. That, that phrase, our words have gravity, they really do. And when people are, are aware of us and observing us in a moment, our words have more gravity. If we're in a room and three of the people are looking at us, at me, and I'm talking to the, four, the fifth person, it's going to be, the person's going to be much more interested in what I'm saying because three other people are looking at me and being observing me. The words take on more gravity. The words become more effective and powerful. Now what I hypothesize is that this carries through video. That the power of mass media, when like Brad Pitt, his words carry so much power, so much weight, literal weight. He can pull things to him with his words in such a dramatic way because so many people are aware of him and focus on him in a given moment because he's everywhere. He's all over video and, and I mean but the thing is he's not everywhere. And it, and it's even Brad Pitt doesn't have as much power as he could because not power but control over his physical rea control over reality as he could if he were to get himself out there more. May like the more we expose ourselves, the more control we have. That's a little tangential. 